but let's stack them up head to head against human cancer cells. Extracts from organically grown strawberries suppress the growth of colon cancer cells and breast cancer cells significantly better than extracts from conventional strawberries. Now this was dripping strawberries directly onto cancer cells and growing in a lab, but as we saw, there are real life circumstances in which strawberries come in direct contact. Well, with kids, cancers. okay? You're gonna just, uh, you're gonna just never eat organic away and organic's just gonna go away and then it won't exist anymore. Everybody's just gonna boycott it until there's none left. And it was the healthiest thing that you could have possibly fed your kids is raw organic plants. And you're just gonna believe some Discord bozo was absolutely- That no organic is written down. It's, there's a law, there's USDA organic. I think the strongest myth is that organic agriculture is nice and cute and warm and fuzzy, but it's not going to feed the world. And that's absolutely untrue. Waking up every morning and starting my day on a piece of land. It's very simple and it's very honest. And I'd like to look people in the eye and hand them what I grow. For me, that is something that is an essential part of what I do. Organic farming is really the only hope in terms of an agricultural system that's going to feed the world going into the future and uh, sustaining the way. Many vegans tend to buy organic where they can, believing that it is healthier, more natural and better for the environment than conventionally produced food. So in this video I want to unpack the ethical concerns with buying organic if you are a vegan who does not want to support the industries that make money from slaughtering animals. I will touch on the health and, and the environmental implications of buying conventionally produced food, but I will go into more depth about this in future videos because I want to address the ethical concern over buying organic food first. This is because if you accept what I am about to lay out for you as to the likelihood of purchasing organic being heavily weighted towards the category of non-vegan as opposed to vegan. And by vegan, what I mean by that is doing what is possible and practicable to reduce unjustified suffering and death. You would presumably take a supplement if you were concerned about the food you're eating not being nutritious enough. And presumably you wouldn't want to support a human holocaust by creating greater demand for it if the products you were buying generated more demand for it. Even by avoiding the Holocaust, it would cause greater environmental damage. I'm sure you would still want to avoid creating more demand for the human Holocaust. So I'm not sure why you would be in favor of supporting an animal Holocaust, if I can persuade you that you are by buying organic, unless you would and can say that what is true about animals that is true for humans would make you think that it is okay to support a human holocaust for the same reasons. So I want to lay out how I see the purchase of organic produce as support for the very industries vegans are opposed to. One, buying organic foods causes an increase in demand for organic fertilizer. This is predominantly the manure, the slurry from the holocaust industries, the blood turned into blood meal, which has been drained from the cattle killed for beef. It is also the ground up bones of the Holocaust victims, and even to a certain extent, the shells, the feathers, and even the minced up male chicks superfluous to the egg industry. Two, increase in demand for organic fertilizer causes the price to increase of fertilizer. So the farmer with livestock and animals makes more money. And three, the farmer making more money from his fertilizer that he sells lowers his operating costs. And so for the farmer's business of killing animals, his operating costs will drop, thus creating an economic increase in supply. Now I hear some of you yelling at your screens watching this video already, calm down, all will be explained. And I am a perfectly reasonable person 
who is willing to consider all of the pro-organic arguments. You can even talk to me in person in the Ask Yourself Discord server in real time, and the link is in the description below. Now I want to put the organic fertilizer demand equals increased animal holocaust demand thing into perspective. The statistics here show the number of farmers using various kinds of organic fertilizers on their farms from 2015 to 2017. Most of it is coming from the very industries that we as vegans are opposed to. So certified organic doesn't allow synthetic fertilizer and plant-based organic fertilizer is only about one to four percent of the total organic fertilizer. So it's next to a hundred percent manure or animal products. The exception is veganic organic farming but this is a very fringe practice at the moment. If we compare this to the fertilizers used for conventional farming, there is a ratio of about four to one synthetic to manure. That's 80% synthetic to 20% manure. Based on a recent report dated the 9th of March, 2018 from the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United States, which cites the nitrogen inputs to agricultural soils from livestock manure. So if the evidence strongly suggests that the most commonly used fertilizers are the manures and slurry from the factory farms and other facilities that slaughter animals, including the dairy industry with almost 100% certainty. And by the way, this also includes blood drained from the cattle, which is dried into blood meal and the bones that are milled into bone meal, which are both used for fertilizer as well. And it is possible and practicable to choose the option that statistically uses far less manure. The conventional option is more like 20% compared to at least 96% in the organic context. And we know that farmers make a profit by selling their shit, thereby reducing their production costs, thereby creating more economic demand for the animal products. The question then becomes, are we morally obliged to choose the option that creates less economic demand as opposed to more of an economic demand for the thing that we are opposed to as vegans? All of this rich, fragrant manure makes organic crop farmer Dan Palladino very happy. He spreads both cow and chicken waste on 3,000 acres of crops in Pompey. There's enough manure out there to grow the large majority of the crops if we utilize it properly. The next part of this video highlights how much profit livestock and dairy farmers make from capitalizing on their shit. So calm down, this is open to interpretation, but I will add the caveat that if you are an ethical vegan who drinks alcohol, you are already actively seeking wine and beer, which has not been filtered using fish batters, milk or egg, because you don't want to create more demand for those products either. So, although your beverage is 100% plant-based and regardless of how it was refined, just like your Gardein and Tofurky is, you are still creating more demand for more throat slitting every time you purchase a product that uses animal products indirectly within the production chain. And just before I get into this, I can hear you screaming, what about supermarkets that sell animal products? Shouldn't we have to boycott them if they were creating more demand for animal products? What about palm oil destroying habitats? What about bee pollinators being exploited for almonds? What are we left to eat now, huh? Okay, calm yourselves, right? Because I'll get to that. I will get to that. And I'll tell you how it's not the same thing. It's not in the same category. Now we need nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium to fertilize soil ready for plantation. And if we take nitrogen from manure from the animal agriculture industry and see how much profit that would actually make the farmer, this will demonstrate my point and put it into perspective. So let's now look at nitrogen as an example. The University of Wisconsin recommendation for growing corn is 100 160 pounds nitrogen per acre and that's about 72 kilos. This is the off-season weight of USC fighter Conor McGregor going into an acre of land which is about 4,000 
and 47 square meters, the size of just over half a soccer pitch. So if you use a solid dairy manure spread at a rate of 25 tons per acre, this will produce 75 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And this is the equivalent to about two London double decker buses curb weight to get half of Connor's weight worth of nitrogen for the soil. So to get the 160 pounds of nitrogen needed for the soil, that equates to 53.3 tonnes of manure. And that's about four double-deckers worth in weight of manure to get the amount of nitrogen needed. So manure ranges from $7.55 to $10 per tonne. So let's use the $7.55 to steel man. 53.3 tonnes of manure for $7.55 per tonne equals $402.60. Now, 15 million calories can be produced from a yield per acre of corn. So divide that by $402.60 equals a yield of 37,237 calories per dollar. Assuming you only lived on this corn, you would be generating $1 to animal agriculture per 18.6 days, assuming you lived on a diet of about 2,000 calories per day. So 20 years on this diet would equate to around about $392 to animal agriculture. A lifetime on this diet would equate to about $1,471 to the animal agriculture industry. So using the ratio of 80-20 based on the synthetic fertilizer usage versus manure usage, as I indicated before, the ratio of 41, the numbers for conventional are as such, $1 to the animal agricultural industry every 74.4 days, assuming 200 calories consumed a day, 20 years on this diet would equate to $98 to the animal agricultural industry, and a lifetime on this diet equals £367.75 to animal agriculture. So organic corn lifetime on this diet is 1,471 to animal agriculture, and conventionally produced corn a lifetime on this diet is £367.75 to the animal agricultural industry. What if all vegans in the US would go from organic to conventional? For the 1,600,000 vegans in the US being organic corn eaters for a lifetime, that would equate to 2,353,600,000 to animal agriculture. For the same amount of vegans in the US being conventional corn eaters for a lifetime, this equates to 588,400,000 to the animal agricultural industry. The difference is 1,765,200,000 to the animal agricultural industry. Now, you could use the argument that every time you buy tofurkey from the supermarket, your one pound contribution to organic carnism doesn't actually make any difference to the amount of animals being bred and stabbed to death. But this is the same argument carnists use when they say that the contribution that they make to buying eggs, milk, etc., is so little that it barely makes a difference in terms of generating demand. Now, when you hear someone say, I eat eggs, prove to me that it causes a chicken to be killed, the same argumentation is used when organic sophists say, I eat tofurkey, prove to me that it causes a cow to be killed. Now, as I have shown you, the organic fertilizer industry does create demand and generates income to the animal agricultural industry. The bottom line is you are still creating demand when you buy tofurkey. So the burden of proof is on the organic sophist to prove that the demand does not cause more suffering and or deaths. Because in the same way that I eat eggs implies I pay for process X to happen, I eat organic implies I pay for process X to happen. So you can argue all you like that the actual net income generated does not cause a significant amount of additional suffering and or deaths. But I would ask you, what amount of suffering or death would you accept for tofurkey when it is possible and practicable to choose Sainsbury's stream dogs instead? So the point is that you can argue that it causes an insignificant amount of suffering and death, but it's still some amount of suffering and death that we, we don't have to support. You can't argue that it doesn't create any demand whatsoever.
So I want to stress the fact that boycotting organic isn't some kind of purist, vegan, elitist form of veganism that isn't practical. And it's not in the same category as boycotting supermarkets because they sell animal products and make profits from those. Or by boycotting products that contain palm oil, which causes habitat destruction, or ingredients that have been pollinated by bees, which have been exploited for that very purpose to pollinate our food. So to illustrate the supermarket's point, I'll just illustrate this point with an example. I have a friend who runs a fully vegan, non-organic coffee shop cafe, and he controls all of the payments through a tablet at the counter, which also logs every purchase the customer makes so that he can keep track of what is selling best and what is not selling so well. Now, it would be counterproductive for him to take this information and think, hmm, I know what I'll do. I'll use my profit to buy more of the stuff that didn't sell so well this quarter since I expect it to make me a profit in the next quarter. That would be irrational unless he could predict the future somehow. Now, why would supermarkets be any different to the local coffee shop owner down the road? Why would they not track all of the products electronically? Why would they use the profit margin created by plant-based products and use it to buy more of the carnist products? Why would a buying manager or senior buyer at Sainsbury's make irrational decisions like this? Now switch plant-based products and carnist products with conventionally produced vegan products and organic vegan products. It's the same line of reasoning. The argument that palm oil isn't vegan because it destroys habitats, so if you boycott organic, you must therefore boycott palm oil to be consistent. I'll address this one now. So this is not the same thing as supporting a holocaust. It falls in the same category as displacing bears from their habitats and destroying their habitats in paper production, in maple syrup production. Think of all the elk in the destruction of the forests used to create maple. In corn production, think of all the field mice that are destructed. Think of all the crows that are culled in order to maintain the yields used for corn production. Carnists use the same arguments against vegans to try to catch us out. And they will push you to a place where you concede that one type of food isn't necessary, so you should subtract it from your diet craziness just craziness as you can literally do that with any food and you wouldn't be saving a single bear a single orangutan a single ant a single mouse a single badger whatever habitat you're destroying you're not going to save a single animal because if every person on the planet boycotted palm oil the growers are going to be growing another type of palm like date palm most likely and if everyone on the planet boycotted the date industry growers are always going to be growing something else that is going to be destroying habitats this is the same for corn this is the same for soya this is the same for any kind of crop they're going to be producing it destroys habitat there will always be habitat destruction in the production of commercially produced food no matter what you switch to and the way to stop destruction is not by subtracting because otherwise what are you left with what are you left with to eat another type of commercially produced food that destroys the same habitats probably you won't win this game it's a silly game to play we need to eat to survive and anyone that suggests that permaculture or growing your own food is the answer scaling that up to be able to feed the world you're joking you'd be asking the majority of the workforce to come out of the offices out of the factories out of the retailers and out of the warehouses to work on the land instead, which is like some kind of communist commune wet dream. Fuck right off! Now, buying organic, on the other hand, is something that is directly supporting the Holocaust industries by creating more demand for cows to be forcibly impregnated, their families torn apart, their horns burnt out, their skin branded, and their very lives amount to milk production machines to the point where they can't stand up or walk properly in shitty dairy farms and the next stop is that for them to go to the slaughterhouse after they're about four or five years old you absolutely are creating less demand for the holocaust victims shit when you buy conventionally produced produce and it's totally possible and practicable for you to do this easily now it's not possible or practicable to avoid foods that come from commercially grown crops i'm sorry i'm getting really passionate about about this but I just I, I, I can't see how supporting organic is ethical convince me otherwise I'm, I'm here I'm, I'm listening 
Now, bees are exploited for crops, this argument. Now, here is a list of fruits, seeds, nuts and vegetables which have to be pollinated by bees or else we wouldn't have these foods. We couldn't eat them, okay? They'd just die out without pollination. Honeybees are the most prominent of pollinators, as I can see here. So, now, if we didn't have the honey, okay, if we didn't have honey, society would function just fine. So, if you're gonna say stop eating apples because of bee exploitation, then again, what are the growers going to replace the orchards with? Another type of orchard, most probably, which will inevitably have a negative effect on wildlife. It's gonna destruct wildlife, we're gonna probably need bee pollinators as well. In conclusion, organic is almost certainly carnist because it creates demand and if you really care about the elusive magical health benefits of putting shit on your food, then you should shit on your own food or source veganic produce fertilised by plant-based composts, which is really fringe and hard to come by, so do that. But you can't argue that it doesn't create demand and you can't argue that increased demand contradicts your principles if you are an ethical vegan. So if you care about ethics and you don't want to contribute to more demand, read labels. Just as you did when you first went vegan, you can quickly realise which foods to avoid and which are fine. And I'm going to go into more detail about the health and the environmental implications of eating conventional food and even GMO food in the, ne in the next video. I care deeply about ethics and I urge you to share my passion and my indignation towards this matter if you feel that I presented a, a good enough case. If not, hook me up on Discord. Because if we are slowing down this process of the world going vegan by supporting the very industries that we are opposed to, then we are doing a disservice to the animals. We are effectively disrespecting their lives because we say killing slightly more of you is more beneficial to veganism because people want more choice of mock meats because they won't go vegan otherwise. We say it's fine for more dairy calves to be treated in this way. If you're a dairy calf, it's fine for you to be treated like the shit in my toilet, flushed away into insignificance because we would be reducing our influence with non-vegan brands. We say, I support the very thing I'm opposed to. And at the same time, I say, I don't support the thing I'm opposed to, which is incoherent nonsense. If the thing that you're opposed to is very possible and practicable to avoid, just like avoiding meat, dairy and eggs, honey, leather and wool is easy, then so too is avoiding organic. It's as easy as reaching for the conventionally produced products rather than the organic product. So thanks for watching till the end and I thank all of you who have stuck around with me for the last three years. Uh, it's it's been a long time since I started this channel, three years ago. I have evolved to want to know more about ethics and the ethical framework of veganism since I started the channel. And I want to test the validity of my own beliefs and this is how I got onto the organic thing. And I never even questioned it before until now over the last uh, two or three months. More videos upcoming regarding harness sophistry as well and how to deal with it if you're a vegan activist or if you're struggling with how to talk to people about ethical veganism, you know, like with your friends and your co-workers, etc. So hit the subscribe button if you aren't ready and to be sure to catch all of my videos, set the notifications bell so you don't miss out. Much love from your girl, the BUWP. See you in the next video. be like yeah let's get rid of all organic plants because we don't like animal poop animal poop is evil <laughs>